uh, M1, <coughs> June 2015, International A-Level. This question has been requested by some of my students for me to answer, so I will answer it now. Um, <coughs> Okay, here we have two particles P and Q with masses M and 4M respectively. The particles are attached to the ends of a light and extensible string. Particle P is held at rest on a rough horizontal table. Okay, some keywords there. One of them is rough, meaning there's going to be friction involved. Okay, so important. And um, the string lies along the table and passes over a small smooth light pulley which is fixed at the edge of the table. Particle Q hangs at rest vertically below the pulley at a height h above a horizontal plane as shown in figure 3. The coefficient of friction between P and the table is 0 0.5 that's mu and the particle P is released from rest with the string taut and slides along the table. Find in terms of mg the tension in the string when both particles are moving. So let's just make a, put some of the forces that are involved here on this diagram. Okay, so we have the weight of Q, let me make it a straight yeah? We have the weight of Q and we have the weight of P. Okay, we also have um, the reaction force of P, which will be important because it's friction. And of course, you'll have the frictional force acting this way because it's going to be moving in that direction. And the friction will oppose the motion. And of course, you have the tension in the string. So this is going to be mg. This is going to be 4mg. Okay, here we have the, the frictional force, which is equal to F max because it's going to be sliding along when it's released. Okay, so it's moving, so F has reached its maximum value, which is going to be mu R. And here we're going to have R, okay, the reaction force. So those are all the forces acting on these two particles in this situation. Okay, so we've got to fi find in terms of mg the tension in the string when both particles are moving. Okay, so we're going to find the tension. So let's form a pair of equations. Okay, so let me start with Q, which is the, the easy one to deal with. Consider Q. Now, I know that Q is going to be moving down when they're released. So I'm going to take down as positive. So I'm going to use the fact that um, F equals MA. The resultant force is equal to the mass times acceleration. Okay, so we're going to have 4mg minus T. 4mg minus T equals MA, okay, which is 4MA. That's taking down as positive. And for P, we can resolve also vertically because of the fact we got R, in which case, if we resolve vertically, we say R is equal to MG. That's one equation that will help us. R is, oops. Already did that. So R is equal to mg. That's going to help us because we have to deal with friction. And we can also resolve horizontally, take it to the right as positive because it's moving in that direction, or according to the diagram. So T is e, T minus mu R is equal to M is equal to mg MA. T minus mu R is equal to mass times acceleration, which is M times A. Okay. So, over here, what we can do is we can take this equation and replace the R with mg and the mu with, we know R is equal to mg, we also know mu is equal to 0 0.5. So, I can write this as T minus, and instead of mu, I put 0 0.5, and instead of R, I put mg. So, T minus 0 0.5 mg is equal to ma. Now, I have two equations which I can use. And I want to find what T is, but let me find what A is first, because I probably will need it later on. And um, it's easy to deal with. If we add equations one and two together, the T's will be eliminated, 
I will ha I'll have 4 mg plus minus 0 0.5 mg, which is going to give me 3.5 mg is equal to, and that will be 4 ma plus ma, which is 5 ma. Okay, so the m's will cancel out, and I'll be left with a is equal to 3.5 over 5 g which is 7 over 10 g you can write that as 0 0.7 g if you want or we can leave it as a fraction decimal will probably be better as i gave us this as, as a decimal but it doesn't make any difference okay so there we have um there we have the answer well no that's not the answer to part um, a the answer is to find what t is so w once we found what um a is we can find what t is so for example if i now take this first equation here and I replace the a with 0 0.7 g so I can say 4 mg minus t is equal to 4 times m times a which is 0 0.7 g okay so I can say 4 mg minus this is going to give you 4 sevens are 28 2.8 mg is equal to t so therefore you can say t is equal to 4 minus 2.8 which is 1.2 mg okay let me just make sure of that you got uh, 4 times 0 0.7 that's going to be 2.8 and you're going to have 4 minus that which is 1.2 that's correct so t is equal to 1.2 mg that's the answer to part a okay now part b okay it says the particle p does not reach the pulley before q hits the plane show that the speed of q immediately before it hits the plane is 1.4 gh okay so now we got to we know that the, the, there's an, an acceleration which we worked out in the first part of the question we worked out the acceleration was 0 0.7 g okay so we know that the acceleration is 0 0.7 g all right so if we consider q um <clears throat> we can use suvat because it has constant acceleration we know that it's fallen a distance of h we know it started with an initial velocity of zero. We have to find the final velocity, and we know the acceleration is 0 0.7 g. Uh, we don't know anything about the time, but uh, we don't need to know in order to answer this question. So if we use the SUVAT equations, we see we've got S, U, V, and A. So it seems like we can use V squared equals U squared plus 2AS. So we can say V squared is equal to U squared, which is zero, plus 2 times a which is 0 0.7 g times s which is h so we can say v squared is equal to that's 1.4 g h so therefore v is equal to the square root of 1.4 g h and that's exactly what we had to show that's the speed of q immediately before it hits the, the plane okay then the next part of the question says when q hits the plane um, Q does not rebound and P continues to slide along the table given that P comes to rest before it reaches the pulley show that the total length of the string must be greater than 2.4 H okay so the total length of the string must be greater than 2.4 H okay just so basically we know that P has moved a distance of H In the before Q hits the ground so when Q hits the ground P hits P has moved H so when Q has hit the ground here okay when it's hit the ground this has traveled now a distance of H so we know that for, for sure it has to travel this distance H then after it hits the ground okay um, this will continue moving and it won't hit the pulley so just imagine we say it stops at exactly at the point okay exactly at the point where the pulley is okay so we'll say there's an additional distance that it travels we'll call that x so 
the length of the string has to be more than h plus x. Because imagine, like, for example, this started from, the shortest possible length of the string would be that q started from up here, right next to the pulley. So if q hits the ground, okay, if q hits the ground, so just imagine, basically, the pulley was at this point here. Q started from, the pulley was exactly here. If Q hits the ground, okay, if Q hits the ground, um, then, you know, this has traveled that distance. And then it's going to travel an additional distance, okay, which is X. Okay, so in the first situation, we already know the distance is H according to us. It says in terms of H, that's fine. Okay, but in the second situation, we know that the, the, the situation about P changes because in the first situation, there's a tension in the string, okay, and that's what's causing it to be moving. In the second situation, the tension in the string has gone because once Q hits the ground, the string is no longer taut and P is no longer being pulled by the string. So in the second situation, the only forces acting on P is the friction that's preventing its motion. So it's going to have like a deceleration and that's why it comes to rest. So we've got to, um, we've got to basically find what that distance is that it takes to come to rest. Okay, and imagine that the pulley is exactly at that point and that will be the minimum distance or the minimum length of the string would have to be that H plus the X. Okay, so what we're going to do here, okay, is we're going to um, think about the situation as Q hits the ground. So as Q hits the ground at that point, and it doesn't rebound, so there's no problem of it going up and then the string becoming taut again. As Q hits the ground, okay, P has a speed the same as Q, which is the square root of 1.4 GH. Okay, so we can see that, let's just draw a little diagram. This is P, okay, the only force acting on it, see the tension in the string is now gone, no more tension. The only force acting it on it is the frictional force, which is mu r, okay, which is 0 0.5 times mg, okay, because remember this was r and this was mg, so it's mu was 0 0.5, okay, so the only force acting on it is 0 0.5 mg. So if we take this as positive, because we know we know that it's moving in this direction, the resultant force is going to be um, minus 0 0.5 mg, and that's equal to the mass times the acceleration, which is ma. So therefore, we can say the acceleration on this particle um, q is minus 0 0.5 g. So, if we apply the Suvat equations, we know that the distance it's moved, we call it x. Okay, that's the distance it's going to move under the new situation once q has hit the ground, this distance x. Okay, and we know its initial speed is the same as the speed of when q hit the ground, which was the square root of 1.4 gh. And we know that the final speed has to be zero because that's the speed where we're saying that it's, it slows down and it stops at just at the pulley. That will be the minimum length of the pulley, of, of, sorry, of the string. That, that x plus the h will therefore give you the minimum length of which the string has to be basically greater than that for this to occur. So you know that's what v is. And the acceleration is minus 0 0.5 g. Uh, we don't need the time here. Again, we can use v squared equals u squared plus 2as. We know v is 0. u squared is going to be 1.4 gh. And you've got plus 2 times a, which is minus 0 0.5 g times x. So this will give you um, minus gx. Well, so you're going to have minus gx, you have 0 equals 1.4. We can get rid of the g's actually because you can divide both sides by g. 1.4h minus, and you're going to have 2 times 0 0.5, which is minus 1, minus x. So therefore x is equal to 1.4h. 
So uh, therefore the minimum the minimum length of the string okay is equal to h plus x which is h plus 1.4 h which is 2.4 h okay so we can say therefore if you want let's write it over here therefore the length of the string has to be greater than 2.4 h which i think is what we had to show yeah 2.4 h